Hello, shalom, hola, and welcome to The Spiritual Life with uh, Mystic Reverend Travis Tidwell. I'm here with my wonderful co-host here, Ashley. Hi, thanks for having me. (laughs) And thanks for being here, and I want to also thank and introduce my executive producer, my daughter, Athena, who's also my high priestess and dragon and uh, just uh, a great soul all the way around. And we also want to acknowledge the Lord God Yahweh here and the Holy and Divine Spirit who is powering this this podcast because it's not my way or your way it's Yahweh and without Yahweh. Yahweh we have nothing I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Yahweh and my spiritual path and the Holy and Divine Spirit and Hermes Mercurius Trismegistus and all the guides they go who in the <laughs> hell is that and all the guides who are helping us here tonight uh, so how you been what's going on with you you know nothing much like like I said I'm just trying to get out of this Mercury retrograde shadow for the ah, love of peace okay. <laughs> yeah Mercury retrograde, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. Yeah. If you had never heard of that, Google it. You can get valid information on that with Google. Um, and, yeah. And just so side note, actually, and then yeah, on give top me the of side the, note and the yeah. side note also to um, being in Pisces season. I heard you feel a little bit more ungrounded. Yeah, it could so be. So it was just like transition. I was like, damn, I'm just floating in space right yeah, now. That's right. She's, well, you know, it's amazing you bring that up because in some philosophies, and I'm not sure how many that would agree with but in some philosophies they say pisces and sag are the two most cosmic signs i'll, I'll second that yeah and i'm sad she's pisces mm-hmm. so I, we, I i i really do believe that and you know one of my best friends tyler hopefully you'll hear this brother <laughs> one of my greatest devotees um is pisces oh yeah and you know um you guys just got so much heart man you know and and when you're Too devoted much you're to devoted a fault. <laughs> He'd probably agree with that right yeah. now. Um, no, great sign, man. I have Pisces in my third house, um, which means that uh, I usually have Pisces in my life in my immediate atmosphere. My second wife was Pisces when my last girlfriend was Pisces. And and what planet rules Pisces? Well, you know, that's a good question. See, I'm, I'm old school Kabbalah. So in old school Kabbalah, Pisces is ruled by Jupiter. Mm-hmm. In the uh, modern astrology, Neptune. it's Neptune. Yeah. And it's, that's much darker. Mm-hmm. Uh, than Jupiter. Like so, a nefarious planet, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so when I do candles for Tyler, because I do, I do candles for him as well as myself, I use Jupiter for his planetary ruler. I do not acknowledge the Neptune. Mm-hmm. And that's my God-given right, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, that, again, is, is modern astrology. Now, today, tonight, and tomorrow, no, I'm kidding. Uh, but right now, this episode is dedicated to um, planetary magic. So... You've never studied planetary magic, huh? No, I'm actually super stoked about this conversation because I'm like, cool, I get to learn something new this evening. Right, right, right. Um, now, uh, before we get any, before we go further, you don't have any goddess groups coming up, right? No, I have no goddess Because groups. she did do a goddess group recently, and for you people here on Spotify listening to us, and hopefully you're enjoying our, our podcast and her beautiful voice, um, you can see us on YouTube and see her beautiful personality. Oh, thank you. Um, Travis Tidwell podcast on YouTube. That's right. And <laughs> if you want to contact Ashley, it's um, the Pisces life coach on Instagram. You can just shoot me a DM and I am readily available to yeah. answer you back. Yeah. And while we're here promoting each other, I do have an album out on Spotify, iTunes called Travis Tidwell time has come. And trust me, ladies and gentlemen, time has come. Mm-hmm. So going back to our conversation here, where, 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 where do we leave this off now? Planetary magic. We're talking about um, what what uh, planets ruled uh, Pisces. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So going back to the old astrology, the OG, because it's all about that West Coast magic and OG in my house. You know, <laughs> they use they're they're really concerned with just seven planets. Just seven. Just that's right. Just seven. Um, the magnificent seven. Yeah, because at some point. The original Kabbalah is kind of crisp and clean with no caffeine. It's very simple. It's simplified. Um, on one of our other podcasts, we've been promoting this book called Simplified Kabbalah Magic by Ted Andrews. Mm-hmm. Uh, poor guy's dead. Now, I wish I could have met him in real life because he owes me money for all the promotions I've sold. <laughs> I've sold so many books. I was just going to say, like, for real. Yeah, for real. <laughs> um, but it's, it's a great book about uh, the planets and how they're used because most people don't know that, you know, in the basic foundation of Kabbalah, the seven planets are the most popular because they're the major. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, Uranus and Neptune and whatever else we got going on is going to influence our, our galaxy Pluto, which they don't acknowledge as a planet, planet now. Planet X, but, the planet behind yeah, Pluto. But, <laughs> but, yeah, well, Planet X, well, I have a whole, that's a whole nother podcast for us. <laughs> But planetary magic is basically learning how to use the planets on a daily basis 
for whatever properties or whatever benefits they can bring you. Each planet has a different benefit, and each planet rules a different day. Mm -hmm. so let me give you an example. So I do candles on the new moon for money, for people, and for love, uh, for myself. And so a love candle I'd like to do on a Monday because mm -hmm. that's the day of Gabriel who rules love. Um, now, I got some clients that... You know, it's full moon or new. I don't want them to now on the moon. And so I'll do it because they're grinding me and you're paying for my time. Mm -hmm. But normally for myself, I'm doing planetary magic, which means I'd rather do my candle on a Friday, which is Venus, which can represent money. And she's mm -hmm. the goddess green and green is always good. Mm -hmm. But normally I like to do mine on, on Sunday, which in Kabbalah is the day of wealth. Mm -hmm. Uh, just like if I'm doing something for protection, I'll do that on a Tuesday because Tuesday is the day of protection with Mars. So each day of the week is associated with a planet, it seems That's like. That's right. Associated with a planet, a different emanation of God, different God name, a different angel. There's an angel that rules every day of the week, and there's a planet that rules every day of the week. Perfect. And they work in tune together. And that's how planetary magic works. Uh, and planetary magic's been here from the beginning of time. I mean, one thing that really gets me is back in the Roman days, right when Jesus came in, you know. Mm -hmm. Jesus came, where am I? I'm on earth, okay. Mm -hmm. And they're worshiping planets as gods. I mean, that's kind of like idol worshiping for some people. But yeah. honestly, if you can see me on YouTube doing this, my God, no. Okay. <laughs> uh, but honestly, yeah, I mean, uh, Jesus walks in and goes, hey, what's going on? Well, we're, we're on, uh, the, the God Jupiter is in the room today. We're honoring the God Jupiter or, or the God Mercury. And I kind of feel that was one of Jesus' prerogatives to say, yeah, they are gods, but guess what? There's one big God, and that's Yahweh. And that's what I love about the story of Jesus. He comes into this consciousness when all kinds of crazy shit's going on, you mm -hmm. know. So we know that the planets have been used as gods. They are considered gods. And so I would just and also, also assume, too, back in those days where they didn't have any explanation, they were trying to come up with an explanation. And I'm sure during certain times of the year, they would see, I guess, certain... I don't know, constellations in the sky or planetary oh, I'm sure. in the I'm sky. Sure. And so is that maybe where it originated from or where? So it's kind of like a form of astrology. In a well, it strange, is astrology. It is it's astrology. basic astrology, mm -hmm. or you, I guess you could tie that into astronomy. I never really studied astronomy. Mm -hmm. I don't know that much about every galaxy and star in the universe, but I know the basic uh, simple foundation of Kabbalah mm -hmm. and astrology. And so in, a, in Kabbalah, there's um, seven daily ruling planets seven days of the week okay so can you explain what those are or what are they can I ask well that? yeah so every planet has a different uh day so like monday is ruled by the moon mm. which makes monday kind of a feminine day it's also the day of gabriel mm -hmm. which is the angel of love so those are good days to do love spells ladies and gentlemen or pray for love on that day if you want no to day. maybe or a candle on that day <clears throat> and then we have tuesdays ruled by aries that's protection mm -hmm. um which would be Mars. Too. Mars, that's okay. right, Mars, thank you. And then Wednesday is ruled by Mercury, and that's going to be good for promoting local travel, local communication, uh, maybe even local commerce and business, mm -hmm. you know, uh, local travel, like I said. Um, Thursday is ruled by Jupiter, <clears throat> ninth house stuff, so that's a good day to plan the future, travel long distance, uh, things of that nature. Uh, go back to Tuesday real quick. Uh, you know, Mars is red, which is a good protective color, and so is blue, which is Jupiter, which has also been used as a protective color. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have Friday, which is Venus. That's a good day for money as well as love, mm -hmm. you know. You know, she's also known as a sinister goddess of war. But, which uh, one is that? Say that one more Venus. Venus. She's Venus, the, oh. the goddess of war, too. So I've heard, mm -hmm. outside of Mars. Right. Mm -hmm. And then Saturday is ruled by Saturn. And Saturn is really about constriction, foundation, um, structure is the word you get with that. Constriction brings structure, you know. Mm -hmm. And then Sunday is ruled by the sun, obviously. You know, they kind of coincide. And that's the day of beauty and wealth. Mm -hmm. So these are the seven planetary uh, rulers here that we have in this galaxy. So basically it's really important to, I guess, um, check your charts or check the charts and perform certain rituals on certain yeah, days of the and, week or and, maybe manifest Yeah, and here's the other thing, things. too. I mean, yeah. if you follow me on uh, Facebook or Instagram, I, I used to on a daily basis say, okay, today's Tuesday, wear red. Uh, you know, God Aries is in the house, you know, yeah. and it's good for physical strength, moving energy, creating more energy, things of that nature. But then I, you know, after doing it repeatedly so many times, I mean, these people got to get it by now. But that's the way that's going to happen. Um, you know, you're going to want to know what day is going to be best for you to perform your magic ritual or to create your intention. It doesn't have to be a big ritual. You could sit down on Tuesday and say, you know, Lord God, Yahweh, bless me this day. And I call upon, 
you know, the planet Airy, uh, excuse me, Mars, <clears throat> to assist me. That. I was like, can you actually call upon the yeah. planet to use Yeah, help well, you? Let's, let's let's get a little bit deeper here. Um, yeah, I'm I would learning. call upon, yeah, I'd, I'd call upon the Sephiroth of, of Mars, <clears throat> and there is a specific name for that, and you can find that in, in the book um, Simplified Kabbalah, Kabbalah Magic by Ted Andrews. Uh, I'm not going to give you everything in this podcast. <laughs> You're going to have to work for it like we did. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's how that's going to work. Um, mm-hmm. You know, same thing for me if I'm going to be doing healing work. Friday is a good day for that. The, you know, color green is good for healing, money, and love. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the old prophets and the ancients wanted to keep it simple. Mm-hmm. And that's why they only had seven. And they knew the other planets and outer planets. These, these guys were smart. Mm-hmm. You know, we're, today they're just figuring out how well they, how smart these guys were. So as we're talking about planetary magic, so I, I know there has to be some correlation to maybe having certain planets align during certain times. Well, like yes and no. And you bet, because every way. planet has a different day, but also every planet has a time and a color mm-hmm. and an angel assigned to it. Mm-hmm. So when you're dealing with planetary magic, you want to know what not only what day that that planet or what that planet has on that day available for properties and virtues, but what angel is connected to it and what God name is connected to it. So you can evoke that vibration, really use it at its highest level. And the book that would be really good to research, that would be Planetary Magic by Melina Dennings and Philip Osborne. Uh, that's my first true love is, is that couple. When you say God name, is there another name that would be associated <clears throat> with the planet? Yes. Okay. Yes. Can we uh, talk about that on this? Well, that's going to be another episode, gotcha. honestly. Um, we talked. We just did a God name one briefly. Uh, you know, I, I'm so paranoid about using God's sacred name on the air uh-huh. and just promoting it casually because it's so sacred and it's something that I, I do on a very private level. Is it a sacred name mm. of God associated with each planet? Yes. Okay. I wasn't sure if it was a specific God, like yes. ne- the God of Neptune or like the God you of bet. Jupiter. Yeah, they, they, yeah, you bet. No, I, no, excuse me. No, Neptune doesn't. Mm-hmm. The only angels or the, the only planets that have God names are the seven. Uh-huh. They're the only planets that have the God names because they are the rulers of each day of the week. Mm-hmm. Neptune doesn't have a day unless we give it to Pisces. You know what I mean? Which we be, don't want it. Which, well, we're, we're, where's it going to fit in in the seven days? Put that in Scorpio. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Mark, my son. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I would rather give Scorpio. And initially, Scorpio was ruled by Mars. And so when I my Scorpio clients come to me, I always use Mars as their planetary rule. I don't care what modern astrology says. I mean, it, it seems like the whole section of the Zodiac belongs from my personal It very well could be. Well, you know, it's amazing because people at home don't realize that every planet in the galaxy is also an emanation of God. That's why there's a God name associated to every planet, mm-hmm. and that's why there's a different angel. And let's go, for an example, Monday is ruled by Gabriel. So Gabriel is aligned with the moon mm-hmm. for Monday. A Even two- though that's not a planet? It would, I mean, I mean, I'm just not trying to be technical, but if people have questions, because the planet well, is just a, I guess, I mean, not a planet. I'm so sorry. The moon wouldn't be considered a planet. Yeah, it's a planet. It is? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't know So, that. yeah, 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 yeah. And it rules Monday. Mm-hmm. The moon rules eat, rules Monday. The angel that rules the moon is Gabriel. I mean, they're all correlated. So we go to Tuesday ruled by Mars. Um, well, there's several angels you can use on that day. Um, I'm trying to think of my favorite angel I'm using right now. Well, I'm using um, an angel called Samael with Visago, uh, an angel and a spirit. And those aren't regular names. You'd have to find those in the 72 names of uh, the angels of fate and destiny. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So d- depending upon the Kabbalistic, the, the Kabbalistic system you're using for angel knowledge, or maybe the Christian, if you're using a Christian si- a system, the angels' names could vary. Uh, Wednesday can be ruled normally by the angel Michael. Mm-hmm. Uh, Thursday is normally ruled by the angel Zadkael. Friday is ruled by, in my philosophy, the angel Anael. And that's just one of the angels. Like I said, there's many different angels that can be assigned to these planets uh, for planetary magic. Saturday is ruled by Kasael. And Sunday is normally ruled by Raphael. And that's in my system and my mm-hmm. philosophy of Kabbalah. It varies. But each planet has its own power. So what I know, what I used to do when I was much younger, um, <laughs> I used to wear a, a purple shirt for Monday because it's ruled by the moon, purple's moon. Tuesday I'd wear red, Wednesday I'd wear orange, uh, Thursday I'd wear a blue shirt, Friday I'd wear a green it's shirt. Color Saturday, coordinating. I, I'm definitely yeah. coordinating. Because, and why? Because I want to receive the positive influence of these planets. Mm-hmm. If this is the day of the moon, then let me dress for the moon 
and let me receive all the moon's benefits and its its vibrations mm-hmm. while I'm walking this planet through the color and maybe the uh, aromatherapy or whatever else I can put together that's going to draw that energy into my life. So, um, well, that's really interesting. So when you say aromatherapy, is there a specific scent that might be associated with the that's planet? That's right. That's right. Each mm-hmm. planet has their own scent, their own stone they can be attri- attributed to. Excuse me. Mm, must have been that sushi I had earlier. Um, yeah, there is. So um, one thing, I, even though I don't know very much about planetary magic, but I can say that I have taken the time to listen to the frequencies before I go to bed of the planets, and it puts me on a whole different level of consciousness. And I feel like the sun itself, even though the sun, you know, not included in the – oh, Sunday, yeah. Um, it sounds like a, like monks chanting. What, where are you getting those frequencies from? Um, actually, you can find them on the internet. On like a or were those the NASA created? Or those the ones that were recorded from the space, the the Cassini um, spacecraft that went to every sphere? To be honest, I can't tell you verbatim how I found it, but I went to a few sites, and a lot of them sound fairly sim- similar. Bring that, bring that in next time we talk, okay. because year, years ago when it came into a long neck bottle, <laughs> um, we had back. This is back in the nineties. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, ship uh, Cassini traveled the uh, galaxy and picked up all the different frequencies of Saturn and and Venus and uh, I had all the frequencies on a ca- cassette tape back in the day. <laughs> you, you can what's find, that? You, yeah, that, that's what that is, Ma. That's a cassette tape. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember. I remember the four track back in the '60s. But anyway. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we go back to this whole thing of of the frequencies. They're very powerful. Mm-hmm. But I'll never forget, because I meditate on each one of the planetary frequencies in my life, and Saturn was the scariest. And um, I was going to say, some of them sound very dark, and it's very low vibrational. And I, I know exactly what you're talking about, because right. I... It's, I can't explain it. I know. Yeah. I just now, know. Only twice in my life have I ever had this happen. Mm-hmm. Once was meditating to the uh, planet Saturn's frequencies from Cassini's recordings. And the other one was meditating to the uh, original uh, orchestrated soundtrack of The Crow. I love The Crow, by the way. <laughs> That's one of my favorite movies. I, I love it. I, Is it Bruce Lee's son? Yeah, Brandon, yeah. poor guy. I just, I wish Brandon, I, I just bless his soul, his spirit, and his loved ones. I'm hoping on the other side they're celebrating life and continuing forward with their gifts. And I'm sure they are. They're mm-hmm. just not laying in some grave. They're two greatest souls. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Um, but where was I at now? I'm sorry. I lost oh, no, you were going back to the, the frequencies of Saturn. It was yeah, like and, and The Crow, yeah. So when I meditate with, with uh, Saturn, uh, I went to a deep trance. And I lost myself for a few minutes, and uh, all I could hear was murmuring. I heard a thousand voices talking to me all at the same time, which meant rubbish. You can't, you know, they're saying words, but they're talking at the same time. You mm-hmm. can't, and that is the freakiest thing to hear. Uh, thousands of, of spirits talk all at the same time. It really kind of freaked me out. And I want to call that the murmuring. I call that the murmuring of some sort. So um, can you say that maybe with um, extraterrestrials or or, um, even just maybe astral projection, um, that could be a location where souls, spirits, entities go in a different well, plane that that very well could be and is that what we're listening <coughs> well, to in a weird that sense? that very well could be um when i listened to the soul or the the crow soundtrack the orchestrated part uh, i fell asleep and woke up and heard the same thing a thousand voices talking to me at the same time and it's kind of scary but you just asked me a question about the um like astro projecting um spirits like actually kind of ruminating around the planet and do you think that might be what the kickback or what you're listening to is the murmuring is like Pro- a pro- probably of yeah probably um, honestly every planet has an angel connected to it every planet is an emanation of God so yes there's probably spirits and there's I'm going to validate that yes there is a spiritual realm on every planet oh, absolutely I know this from studying Mormonism I was also baptized Mormon once and uh, I mean you've just I was, been around the spiritual well, block <laughs> I, well I was raised Catholic I mean went to Catholic school and church and stuff but my first wife was Jehovah Witness and so mm-hmm. I studied Jehovah Witness but my um, and my with my first wife um, we did become Mormons for a little bit because of my aunt and I noticed in studying Mormon in fact Mormonism was the the, the that was what got me kicked off I was that's a whole other show but but I did notice in the Mormon religion 
that there's uh, seven different layers. There's seven different uh, consciousnesses. There's like a number there's seven, seven different, that well, keeps reoccurring. Well, yeah, you bet. Because And they don't realize that because if you go to the temple in La Jolla off the five, mm -hmm. there's different colors for every level. And they match the chakras, but they don't know that. I feel like I would have automatically made the connection, yeah. but... Well, I did when I walked into that white temple before I was already uh, awakened, and I walked in after being... This a, is in San Diego, yeah, people. Yeah, that's, that's right. It's right the off the five. Interstate 5 in San Diego. And <laughs> you see me on YouTube bending down on my mic. We need some donations here. Give us some money. No. <laughs> we need to up our equipment, but yeah. Right. But no, so I realized that the Mormons are onto something mm -hmm. because they believe that depending on where you're at spiritually is depending on what heaven you're going to go to. I... I I totally believe in that. I feel like when people pass, I feel like they create their own reality of heaven. That to, they go to a degree, to, possibly, but but also too, there is a there them. is a standard. I mean, we're not dead, so we couldn't tell you this, but I am a medium, and I know from talking to people that, spin. Uh, I say people, dead people, because I talk to dead people. Uh, I know that they're very much free and alive and moving around and moving and grooving. It's just not lying. And free will. Some do. Some are traumatized or stuck to earth. You know. Mm -hmm. But going back to planetary magic, you know, I mean... I'm glad you brought that up because um, I remember reading, and I don't quote me on this, but I know that there's... Quote her, Athena. I was like, like it, for instance, um, with Thoth, you know, the halls of a mentee, like they talk about in the inner planet right, and the souls right. that are passing through. So I feel like it would only be right to think the same with other planets. It, the same thing has to be happening. Yeah, you know, there's going to be, you, to, to, they're, they're very similar, I'm sure. You know, that was a good question about spirits on other planets. I'm sure there is. Mm -hmm. There just has to be. We're talking about Mars. There's probably an inner spiritual realm there right now working. And I'm sure that there's certain times of the year where um, the alignments and the energies are a little bit more Well, vibrant. yeah, when you start talking about planetary magic, I mean, yeah, back in the day when magic was in here in England, there was a planetary alignment that was allowing people to perform all these different types of magical rituals and acts there is a planetary alignment that has to be involved that's why when you start doing serious planetary magic and i do it casually casually but i have done it serious and when you do a serious planetary magic uh you're going to have to know the angel's color the frequency the angel likes what not only day he's available but what time he's available i feel and like you have a very small window for that yeah i was gonna say i feel like this is um something not for the beginners like you have to work your way into this subject i'm assuming it seems like a lot to not to know about to be yeah no there's on. a science to, it's, it's the science of god mm -hmm. you know honestly i mean i do ceremonial magic and this this entails the same thing it's the metaphysical with the with the quantum physics at the same time. Yeah, and I want to say use the word metatronics. Metatronics, exactly. You know, um, and so if you're, you know, interested in becoming more attuned with the planets, you'll start wearing the daily colors first. And so how can that, I guess, um, benefit me? You said, like, to take back the highest vibration of what the planets are, you know, giving you on that certain day. Now, um, when we talk about that, in, like, what sense is it elevating me in my day like am i setting an intention um am i just well, that, up you know that that's a good question um when i wear a blue shirt on thursday i just want the positive influences of jupiter mm -hmm. and i want that planet and that sphere to know that i'm acknowledging them by wearing that color so i'm hoping to be in some kind of flow and synchronicity that day with the planet mm -hmm. and to benefit from that planet's energies whether it's the blue day or the green day or the red day i want that planet's favoritism and i want to be in tune with that energy that's mm -hmm. the reason and i'm acknowledging also by doing that Absolutely. Yeah. We got ran out of frankincense, but we're burning sage burning now. Burning sage, a leaf of sage. Did you know you could smoke sage? So I've heard. I heard it um, gets rid of bacteria in yeah. the body, diseases. It's really, really, in fact, if you're in the desert and you got sage, you can just suck on that, and it'll become moist and save you from <laughs> being thirsty. So, or drinking your own yeah. pee. Um, yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, so back to the planetary magic too. Um, um, is there any herbs, speaking of sage, that might be associated with some of the planets that I could be utilizing? Did I just drop something? Um, yeah, I got it. I got it. I'm sorry. That we could be using, like on well, a Monday or a Tuesday. Yeah, Monday lavender. Lavender. You know, and this is where you're going to want to get to um, your incenses. Why don't you grab a couple incenses up there and let's see what the planetaries are. Right there, a couple jars. That's a good question. I, I have herbs for every planet and ritual that you can think of, most likely. I've got about 100 herbs. Uh, yeah, well, any of those jars? No, on top right there, yeah. You, are you yeah 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 that's perfect okay so um here we go this is a cardamom this herb is cardamom and this is used on friday with the element of water for venus 
Ooh. Now, this brings, she picks lust and love. Don't put that in my hand. <laughs> it's in your hand currently. It's, oh, my God. No. <laughs> Give it to me. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's how that's going to work. You're asking me, so, yeah, there are plants and herbs and stones and oils that are attributed to each planet. Oh, it's so, even associated with a deity, too. Mm-hmm. You oh, bet it is. I had no idea. And that's how we do it in my house, baby. Now, pull that up to the camera. Can you want to zoom in on that? You know, I mean, you people on Spotify, uh, I, I love you guys for listening to our, our podcast, but go on YouTube and check it out. You can see some of the stuff we're pointing out on the TV. And here. just FYI, like I know all those hodgepodge people out there probably don't have half the shit that you have. Yeah, I mean, likely. it's really great. Mm, you have to be real professional to have what I have. Honestly, I mean, I've been doing this for 32 years and I have more herbs downstairs in my garage. Some of them do be need replaced, but all these here are functional herbs. I have... Um, uh, now, if somebody wanted to maybe to, to look more here. into this, or um, can they go to your website if they needed some of this? Mm, Where would we go? For no, this? no, I'm sorry. You're going to have to go on the internet. I'm not. On the internet. Yeah, my website is very limited. We're launching the website this month. COVID took out my business last year, kind of killed everybody's business. So I had to shut down because really it just wasn't worth my time. And mm-hmm. I've been doing everything free to help people out. But um, no, these herbs are too serious for me to sell. Can and I smell I, this? Please, okay. yeah. Um, and pull one more too after you do that. Yeah, no, absolutely. Ooh. Here, let me you can tell that they're. Uh, yeah. They've been in there for. Yeah. Ooh, wow. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. Mm, a nice smell. That is very potent. It. Okay, let's grab another one. Now, now, and just real quickly, we have um, this herb here for for Friday for planetary magic, and this would be a good herb to burn on Friday to create. Well, I, t- I said Gabriel was good for love, but, you know, Venus is good for love, too. I have a, an altar dedicated to Venus because she, she is my goddess, even though she can be really, really <laughs> bipolar. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, and now she just, <laughs> now she picked another one. And this is funny because this is Angelica root that you picked today. Uh, it's ruled by the planet Sun, so we could use this for on a Sunday. But its deity is Venus, the goddess Venus. Isn't that wild? Check it out. And this is for exorcism, protection, healing, and vision. So, on us on this particular one, we'd probably do a Sunday ritual with Angelica root, and probably go for probably the visions, maybe the healings. I wouldn't use it for protection that day or exorcism. I'd use it on a Friday for that maybe incorporate i mean on a tuesday excuse me i I would probably try to incorporate some of this on a tuesday um a lot of times when you're doing protection rituals um and you're trying to make a protection herb you want to get uh four herbs that are for protection that are earth air fire water Mm -hmm. of each element that's right that's how i do my business Mm -hmm. so i can have that but angelica really smell let's see this has a smell here Mm. yeah this is still good this is all still good so Ooh, they smell. Oh my gosh, like they're they're completely different smells. I've never smelled before. Yeah, um, Athena, can you get to a little plastic bag? Do we have any small plastic bags, sweetie, or no? Uh, we're down there. Okay, forget it. We'll do now, that after. Now, when I'm utilizing this, am I burning it? Am I? How am I? Well, as you can see, these here don't have any poison signs, so yeah, you can burn them. Oh, okay, perfect. But I do have jars that have the poison symbol on the crossbones. Um, yes, I did see grab, that one. Grab I... that. Grab that. We'll see what it is. Please. God, I'm working the girl now, baby. You can... <laughs> Most exercise I've gotten all day. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, now she just pulled another root out. This is hyjon root. And this is ruled by the planet Mars. So we could use this for a Mars planetary magic. Its element's fire. Its power is money, love, success, happiness. And empowers any magic. So you could take this root and put it on your altar for any ritual you're doing. It's just going to magnify it. But you see here it has the crossbones. If you're on YouTube, you want to zoom in on that real quick, please? Now, it looks like it's in a ball. Yeah, now, this, this, is a, this, is a, this is a big high john root. Mm-hmm. Usually I like the smaller ones because I'd have to cut this one up. And this is poisonous. So if you were to cut this up, wear a mask. If you were to snip this cutting it, you'd probably die. If you were to eat it, you'd die. For anyone uh, looking for something slick. I'm yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> it's got the skull and crossbones right there because this is poisonous. So 
when you're also going to be thinking about planetary magic, think about the herbs. Make sure that they're safe to deal with. Mm -hmm. I specifically put that on there because I don't want anybody dying from any magic. I'm doing, and I know better than to put that on my altar and put an in incense because that would kill me. And how long would this be good for? Uh, ever, forever. Ever? You can just leave it there? Yeah. yeah. Don't need. A lot of this stuff's good forever, depending on what it is. This looks like a bunch of marijuana seeds that Codman does. I'm putting this out because you're going to take some home with you tonight. You can have a little bit here. Oh, you're so sweet. Yeah, I always yeah, yeah. feel like coming over here is just so you're and so, so giving. There's always something giving away. Yeah, I know. Know. it's just my nature, you know. Thank you. <laughs> Such a Sagittarius thing yeah, to do. And yeah. also Travis thing to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so, yeah, so now, now we see how the planetary magic works mm -hmm. and that we do have herbs associated with each planet. Um, and we have a deity associated with each planet. There's multiple deities for the planets. The best book you can buy actually for this information is going to be The Planetary Magic by Melinda Dennings and Philip Bosma. Of course, I have the book, and I've been mm -hmm. studying it for years. <laughs> because also there's a certain number associated with each planet besides the color. I mean, it gets very, very detailed. Mm -hmm. And depending on how, how far you want to take your magic, you know. Now, obviously, I've been studying this for 30 years, so I, I got a pretty good idea about the plants and, and planetary magic, and I use it as much as I can. Mm -hmm. And I am a ceremonial magician, so that also comes into play. That's why we talk about, you know, studying tarot. People don't realize when you study tarot, you get to learn astrology, numerology, color, everything. You really do. And I, we were just talking recently. Yeah. And I was a little stressed out. You're like, you're stressed. I'm like, yeah, I am. Yeah. Because it's a lot to learn. Like, there's a lot of associations with that oracle. You, you know? bet. No, the tarot is the most powerful oracle you'll ever study in your life. The only oracle that will make you a medium. And the only oracle, if you study it right, is going to empower you with this kind of knowledge automatically. Mm -hmm. Now, I also have the Herbal Tarot deck. Have uh, you ever seen that one? No, but I didn't even know they had one. That's another podcast. <laughs> That'd be great. I, I would love to learn. Yeah, you know what we'll do is we'll get a podcast, excuse me, Herb Podcast Part 2, bring some herbs in, but also use the guide that I have, you know. Oh, absolutely. The, the tarot cards. And what I, I do is on that oracle, I have you pick uh, you know, either one, one to three cards, and then I'd make that herb bag for you. Perfect. Well, let yeah. me. So, so speaking of which, is there like a higher level of planetary magic, like something? Yes. Okay. It's ceremonial. Ceremonial. Yeah. Okay. And that 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 is actually the highest magic you're going to get to. Mm -hmm. The ceremonial magic. This is where we're using the planet, and the angel, and God's sacred name, and all this stuff to uh, evoke a lesser angel to do the work. Mm -hmm. So it's it's I'm using a higher archangel to summon a lower spirit. Mm -hmm. Who could be considered, you know, I don't know, uh, different. And uh, we license that spirit through the archangel to manifest whatever it is we're asking for. Mm -hmm. So that's very technical. It's very serious. It is very technical. Oh, I was just thinking. Very serious. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to be doing any kind of magic, planetary or ceremonial, unless you got a good God connection. And this is the kind of stuff here that will enlighten you. It's going to empower you. It's going to elevate you. But there's going to be a price. The mm -hmm. price is commitment. The, the price is, you know, getting closer to your source and creator. The price is, is sacrifice your time to study and to gather this information. Yeah. I mean, that's why you're going to pay me for my time. I took the time to study. <laughs> well, know? that's why people go to you because yeah. they don't know. And, and that's like with a doctor, a certified mechanic, or anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to go to the professional who's got the training, who knows what they're doing, and you're going to pay for it. I'd rather go to the dealership and get a factory job than go to the backyard. I won't even go to a backyard mechanic. I'm sorry. I think it would also be good to know about this stuff as well because um, I think there's a lot of people that could sell you on something and then not even be doing the right thing. So you can entrust in somebody to be like, hey. Yeah, that's a tough one. You're so right and about I would have, that. And then all of a sudden, like everything that you've been asking to manifest is just going to hell in a handbasket, you know? Yeah, so, they could be taking your money, going home and sleeping I don't at even, night. Yeah, I was going to say, so I don't know if this is necessarily something that you would want to reach out to a stranger for. You re right. Really well, here, here's what I do. If somebody was to pay me to do planetary magic for them or a candle for them or ceremonial magic, which I have, mm -hmm. uh, I always take a picture of what I do. And for the ceremonies, I videotape it mm -hmm. and let them know, yeah, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. That's the available time here for this angel. And this is all the stuff he needs, and I'm calling him right now for you, and I put that out there. They see everything. They see the time. It's real on everything, so they know that I'm giving them their money. I'm, I'm, I'm working for you. So so it, will this be available for, for clients in the future? Yes. You can go to my website uh, after the 20th of this month. I'm going to have it done by then, I promise. <laughs> I've already done the horoscope column. I just got to get it typed out, <laughs> and then you're going to help me do some other stuff. But yeah. Yeah, yeah the website's going to have the ceremonial magic available for people to purchase. 
uh, planetary magic for people to purchase and also candle magic for people to purchase through my uh, through my website you'll be able to purchase that mm -hmm. um, and it'll give you a really uh, specific detailed information on how and what I can do for you and that's Travis Tidwell.us there's already information up now the newsletter is not up to date and there's a lot of stuff not up to date we're still putting that together mm -hmm. I don't think I've had my website together for about four years five years now maybe about four years maybe and I let it go. You know, it's, it's been there. Uh, I had a good friend of mine who has uh, a, a hosting called uh, Sites R Us, which is really, if you, you know, if you don't want to spend a lot of money, you can go, go to Sites R Us. They're a decent site. Mm -hmm. but, and I was with them for years, but I went to GoDaddy this time. Mm -hmm. I got a special loan because of COVID last year when my business went under. They go, hey, well, let me help you out. We're going to help you, you know, re renew your business. So I, I got a special uh, SBA loan for the COVID disaster relief, believe okay. it or not. Actually, I start paying for it now. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so it was with that money, thank God, uh, that they they loaned me is now I've invested that in the bowls and the website and all this stuff so I can re restart my business this year. COVID has done a number going. for so many people. It, yeah, you know, but it's been good on a lot of levels, and I'll tell you why because I've never zoomed before, been on the internet. I'm doing that now. Mm -hmm. I'm giving people free classes, and I have been doing that. Mm -hmm. Which you know, who's doing that right now? Not a lot of people, no. You know, and I'm not giving just free stuff. I mean, this is real deal information. Yeah, and, and people can get in contact with you directly. I know a lot of uh, and individuals have courses where it's like, oh, just click, you know, the arrow button. But it's like if you have questions, you can definitely ask you directly. And if they right. have any questions right now, you go to Travis Tidwell Podcast at gmail.com. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And uh, we do have uh, the Sacred Dragon Manual available for sale on that website this month. I do have level uh, one, two, and three Reiki available on my website with the manuals, but the manuals got to be retyped. So mm -hmm. we'll see how that works. Maybe I can get you to do that. We'll see. Uh, okay, yeah, so we're, we're still, yeah, you know, Ashley's <laughs> helping me put the website together, uh, going to help me manage it. So, yeah, I'm very excited about turning everybody out there uh, onto my website and all the services I have, you know. And I also, you know, of course, I'm not doing any house cleansings or blessings right now. I say that, but I have this very special friend. Mm -hmm. We're going to go videotape a house cleansing next week. Oh, nice. I'm excited yeah. to see that. It's on Tuesday. Yeah. It was Tuesday chosen? Oh, that's yes. a good thing. No. I was going to say, is Tuesday that's chosen? Right. That's right. You, you're starting to know me. That's, <laughs> yeah, she goes, when can you bless and cleanse my house from this negative energy? Oh, it's a negative entity. I've been there before because her girl got murdered and a bullet came through a wall. And we, there's been some crazy stuff at this house I'm going to. And last time I went, I took Mark. We had an EMF gauge. And uh, we found out that actually some of the copper piping and stuff in her house was a, a magnet for negative energy. Oh, yeah. And so if you're having problems, give us an email and I can help you with that uh, information. But yeah, so she says, what I usually like to do house blessings on Sundays. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite day to come in. You want your house blessed? I'll do it on a Sunday. But if you want your house cleared and you have a negative spirit, I'll be there on Tuesday because that is the day of protection. Mm -hmm. And it's a day of moving energy with Mars. So, and then yeah. was Sunday, what day is that for a blessing? Yeah, a house Sunday. blessing. I'll, I'll bless your house on a Sunday. And is there something associated with the sun? Is it like the ray, like the, the heat? The beauty, you know. Yeah, just it's just a sacred day. It's a Sabbath day. Of course. So that's why I would bless the house on a Sabbath day. But uh, moving a, a negative energy, if I have, if, you know, you know, a lot of people, but you can't wait till Tuesday. Okay, then we'll get in there now and start doing, you know what I'm saying? But normally if I have my way. Uh, the la yeah, the lady's not um, in any life-threatening situation. Actually, one of her grandchildren's being kind of attacked by a spirit there because uh, it shows up. Oh, of course. And um, it's weird. She was just here, and like I said, I'll be there next week. And um, last time I went and cleansed her house, I wasn't using planetary magic, but we still had a good time, and it, it still seemed to work. In fact, when I called the dead girl's name to me, you could hear their footsteps walking down the stairs. Ooh. We had that on video. Dang. Um, and when I did that invocation at her house, she lives in North Park, South Park. Actually, about a million spirits showed up. And when we, I had somebody randomly taking pictures around the house as I was cleansing it and blessing it. Orbs galore. Not only orbs, but you can see faces in the windows. In fact, the bullet hole that was in her house that killed the girl has a face right there on the wall that you can see that she took it. That's what got me there. So do you think it's the, the water piping that became the conduit for the spirits to be attracted at this location? It could be to some degree, but I know that she lives in a, a neighborhood where there's been a lot of deaths, a lot of homeless people dying. Uh -huh. The girl that's connected to her duplex uh -huh. got murdered right there. Oof. And so that's what really started this. There was really no problems before that. Uh -huh. 
uh, in fact, the, the first, uh, the first and second time I cleansed that house, when I went to the bathroom, the lights came on and off by themselves. I go, Damn! But then we find out that there's an electrical energy there. Mm-hmm. I wasn't. I was, back in the day. I wasn't using an EMF and a, and a white noise box. You just, just had to go with your intuition. Just go in and just and me. I'm, I'm very intuitive. I'm a medium, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna do the. I'm gonna do the job regardless of what's going on. Of course. But um, and I think the white noise box could be a little bit of a waste of time. Uh, you know, if you ain't got the money for the real deal, big stuff they're using, don't even bother with it. Yeah. Um, but the EMF gauge, priceless. <laughs> because I've been to houses where there were not spirits. Mm-hmm. There was uh, EMF energy in that place like you would not believe. A quick story. Um, I went on a sa- Sunday because that's the day I, I, I cleanse and bless homes. Mm-hmm. Not remove spirits, but cleanse and bless. And I go in this lady's house. She has an autoimmune system disease, so which means that she's sick all the time. Mm-hmm. She wakes up feeling sick and doesn't want to get out of bed. So I took, and I had my spiritual brother Mark with me, so I took the EMF gauge and put it over her bed where she sleeps, and it went off the Richter scales. Mm-hmm. So I threw some crystals on the bed, and it lowered it. I threw a plant on the bed with crystals, and it killed it almost. Mm-hmm. But she's sleeping there, so she can't sleep with a, planet on, a plant on her bed and crystals. So okay. she had to move it to find a better sl- place to li- uh, sleep. Mm-hmm. But these are the kind of things you can do to help block negative energy. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was just another thing I learned. You know what I'm saying? Now, I did pick up that there had been spirits in the house, but there was nothing negative. Mm-hmm. There was no poltergeist activity going on. Otherwise, I would went back and did some planetary magic and thought about another planetary day to do some magic there. But so that, it was all good. But we'll see. The next one will be on my YouTube channel. We're going to record it. My executive producer will be there. She's going, oh, my God, Dad, no, really? <laughs> yeah. So is there anything that we should be staying away from, speaking of, you know, having to throw the crystals and doing this on a Tuesday? Well, I, you know, the only thing I'd be worried about is that somebody trying to think they know it all when they read the book once and trying to go out and do a bunch of stuff. I think you should take it step by step. Mm-hmm. Um, planetary magic is a lot of fun, actually. Mm-hmm. Melina Dennings, Philip Osborne is one of the safest systems you're going to use for that. Mm-hmm. And also, simplified Kabbalah magic is not going to give you the ritual, but it's going to give you just some enlightenment about planets. And I think that's probably where you should start first before yes. you get into any well, of this. Well, yes, yeah. And, and, well, and even before that, where you need to start is with your God names. Yes. With your connection with your Yahweh. If you don't have a good connection. I mean, if you're worshiping Satan, don't even listen to this podcast. You know, you're you're not going to go anywhere. I'm sorry. It's 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 a falsehood. Uh, we don't need anything but the divine source. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, the first thing I would do is make sure I had a good God. See, people don't realize you're going to have a good God connection and and still deal with planets and talk to, to other gods and goddesses. It's all in your natural God given right. But most people don't see that because of Christianity. Mm-hmm. And so this will block them. But for those of you out there who are really serious about your spiritual journey. And your spirit, uh, you know, serious about manifesting success in your life and, and changing it in different ways. Now, I'll do a candle for myself and, and a ritual before I do marketing. I've never done any formal advertising in my life, and I've got clients over the United States. You know what I'm saying? It's word of mouth. So, you know, this this is just another way to move energy. Is there any crystals associated with planets? Yes, there is. Okay. Now, obviously, Monday's Moonstone. Oh, exactly what the you colors know. are. Or you could use just a quartz crystal. You betcha. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tuesday red. What do we got? Jasper. Jasper. Got bing, mm-hmm. ding, 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 ding. Uh, she knows it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> no. And then Wednesday, we could use carnelian. Mm-hmm. Uh, Thursday, we could use lapis. I love lapis. Yeah. Friday, we could blue. use uh, malachite. Oh, I love malachite. I don't or know adventuring. If I've seen that. Yeah. Uh-huh. We'll have to bring, we'll, we'll do a crystal show. Yay. And, um, and then uh, Saturday, I would use obsidian or onx. Mm hmm. Or maybe even black tourmaline. I love tourmaline. Uh, just make sure you keep it cleansed. And um, you have to cleanse those. Oh my God, black tourmaline. Oh Shit, my God. I didn't God. know that. I'm all. Uh, it's been sitting up. Well, I haven't used it for anything major except for protection. So yeah. Well, even still, you want to cleanse that once in a while because that that absorbs all the negative energy in the house. It can only handle so much. But we got to be re- recharged. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> Good to know. Yeah, and then Sunday you could use uh, that yellow obsidian. Look at that yellow obsidian. I know. I just I've been you. twirling this in my hand this it's whole time, and it makes stone. me feel so good. Though it's like a, it's a happy stone. It is it's a happy a stone. Happy it's stone. a solar plex stone, which and is it, happiness. If anyone can see this, but it's yeah. so nice. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Let's see. Can you can you zoom in on this? And really, that comes from the mystical dragon in Carlsbad. Uh, you can. It's on Grand Avenue. You can get a hold of Cat, who's a beautiful, sweet soul there, who's the manager. Elena's the owner. 
And this is the only store I know with yellow obsidian. It's gorgeous. Now, that's a good Sunday stone. I was just going to ask. I'm like, yeah, so. That is a great Sunday stone. You could use that for Sunday planetary magic if you wanted to. And, you know, let's do something simple real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say you want to have more money and wealth and happiness in your life. Go to a Sunday. Get a yellow stone. Now, we talked about we have a yellow obsidian. What's another yellow stone, Tina? I'm just trying to think off the top of my head. A canary yellow diamond. I'm just kidding. Mm. <laughs> Well, there is a stone called Sunstone, which has an orange-yellow tint to it. You can also get a citrine. Yeah, I was going to say citrine. You know, citrine could be good. Okay, so, citrus. Yeah, so get a yellow stone. You know, Sunday frankincense. You get some frankincense on Sunday. You know, that's God's favorite smell. And sit down and meditate on the planet Sunday. Sunday would be a good day. And if you're Christian, you can include your Sabbath on that. You know what I'm saying? But that would be one of the ways I would start that. Or if you want to do something on a Monday for love, get a moonstone. Mm -hmm. Um, get yourself a purple flower like an orchid. Oh, my God. I love orchids. All, all the girls I date get orchids from uh, the Aloha flowers in Carlsbad. I've been buying them for 25 years. <laughs> I think some people might have a problem with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How many girlfriends have I had? Since? Quite a few. And they've all got orchids from uh, you know, Aloha flowers in Carlsbad. So, <laughs> Yeah, but no, seriously. So you're going to put... You know, and then you can call the Angel Gabriel on Monday. Say, Angel Gabriel, you know, uh, I, I adore you. I want your help, and this is what I want. Same thing if you're there on Sunday. You call the Angel Raphael. So now you're starting to get, you know, a little bit more strategic, a little bit more technical. But just you can start out just the color yellow on your altar, a yellow stone. Can you use it as an offering as well or no? No. Nah. Can you do offerings to any of the planets? Yeah, do incense. Do... You burn that. You're you're burning your incense is really an offering. Really. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless you're into Santeria, I'm not going to be killing any animals anytime mm -hmm. soon here. Uh, but like you know, some people put like money. Like, um, what day? Green. Um, Friday. Friday. Yeah. So it's just like okay, maybe put some money on my altar. Yeah, but don't leave it there. Take it and spend it later. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. you know, what's the money to do for them? Nothing. Yeah. Now, what, one thing we do do is we do bury offerings, but it's usually the incense that we burn, mm -hmm. uh, the parchments that we burn, we bury. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Uh, once in a while, I might give an offering some fruit and bury it. Mm -hmm. You know, but because the money, no, I'm gonna keep that in me pocket. Uh, <laughs> you know, they can't take it with them. Uh, but, yeah, that, that's going to be really the offering. The, the biggest offering you can give any planetary sphere, emanation, angel, or spirit is love. Mm -hmm. That is the best offering you're going to give anybody is and love. Acceptance. And acceptance. And acceptance, you bet. Mm -hmm. Angel Raphael, I call you this day to en enhance my life with beauty, along with the planet of the sun, you know. Uh, help me. Enhance me. Elevate me. I mm -hmm. mean, that's the kind of stuff you'd want to ask on a planetary level. And um, just, I think my one last question, because I, I think you covered everything, but um, can you utilize like your oracles when you're, when you're doing planetary magic? Like for instance, how we have um, the Empress, right? So it's associated with Venus. Mm -hmm. No. No. You can't <laughs> just, just curious. No. Yeah, I would not. Um, that's a good point though. Mm -hmm. I mean, but no, I have to, yeah. you know, I have not done that. Mm -hmm. The oracle is so great, and it is connected to all the planets. And mm -hmm. don't get me wrong, you could use them in planetary magic. I just haven't. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're going to do another podcast on this. This is, this is, uh, let's the make tip a note. Of the iceberg. Let's make a note that this is actually. Um, part one. Part one. Yes, we're going to make this part one tonight. And again, if you have any questions with what we've talked about, leave us a comment on the, the channel or get a hold of me at Travis Tidwell Podcast at gmail.com or you can get a hold of Ashley at the Pisces Life Coach on Instagram. Yeah, and we're looking forward to hearing from you if you have a question about anything we've talked about in this podcast or previous podcast or something we haven't talked about. Oh, please, there are some uh, please. ideas Please, I need some new fresh blood here. We're like vampires. Come on, throw no, me a and, bone. And, and speaking of which, like this is what we piggybacked off of our, our last episode. Um, just this is an all-inclusive community. Like, if you guys want something that you want us to talk about that we can research so we can just throw it out there, please, because yeah. we're always open you for bet. that. And also, I'm a psychic medium for a living, and she's now training to be that. And so if you have a valid question, uh, I'm willing to give that to you free. You know, if you want to know if your job's going to work out, if you're... Well, no, if your wife's cheating on you, go to somebody else. If you're asking uh, that, yeah. it's probably yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doesn't take rocket science to figure out she hasn't been home for dinner in three weeks. But anyway, um, you know, I don't want to go there. Uh, but yeah, so no, but seriously, if, and if you don't know who your assigned angel is, mm -hmm. I just can't tell you enough how wrong that is. Now, we're talking planetary magic. Each planet has an angel. They know who their angel is. Mm -hmm. Do you know who your angel is? 
And so out of this podcast and this episode, the gift to you from the spiritual life is knowing that we've given you two days you can work with Sunday and Monday with the different stones and colors. Mm -hmm. Those would be the two days I would prescribe if somebody's going to start this. Those would be the energies I would work with in the beginning, honestly. Yeah. And everybody's looking for love nine times out of ten. You can do the Monday, the orchid, you know, the moonstone, or if not a moonstone, an amethyst. Can you do a quick template for the people listening, though? Like, um, how would I sit at my altar? How would I sit in my house? And I I know it's Sunday. Now, I just want to... I guess uh, start, I guess uh, vibrating and uh, like, do I have to do a prayer? Do I have to say, you know, everything starts with a prayer Mm -hmm. and everything starts with a kind of a visualization. Well, you know how we start. Yeah, of course. We we have a routine actually, which is pretty powerful. But uh, yeah, I mean, for, for most simple folk, um, you know, let's say on a Sunday. Now, if you can't face East, because anytime you pray to Yahweh, the Hebrew Jewish God, you should face East. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've talked about that. But, um, yeah, you want to sit down comfortably in a chair with your feet together, relaxed. You don't want to be in a yoga position. That's not going to work. You you can have a yellow candle, which would be great to honor that Sunday and Mm -hmm. and the planet and that angel. But a white candle will work just as fine. Now, why wouldn't sitting in a yoga position work? Mm Because I think a lot of people maybe have like an idea of like just sitting cross-legged in front of an Well, if you can do that, you want to do that, that's fine. But let Mm -hmm. me tell you something. You want to be make sure that you're sitting at a table like we are so that at some point, We can look down at the altar. We can meditate and visualize what we see here on the table. In a yoga position, I'll have to sit on the floor. Unless you have a small table, right? Like a lower table? Yeah, if you've got a small table, (laughs) sure. I'm just not into that. But, yeah, I mean, but if you can pull it off, more power to you. Because my thing is I want to be mobile. I might have to get up from the table to do something. Yeah. And I might want to move something around. I don't know. I mean, last time I tried to do yoga, uh, I love kundalini yoga, by the way. Um, I couldn't walk for a whole street because my knees hurt so bad. So now maybe people, well, you haven't limbered at my age. It's going to be really hard to limber those bad boys up because I've been doing chair meditations for 30 years now. Mm -hmm. And and I've purposely have been preventing myself from doing that yoga position. But yeah, you could if you have a small table. I do table. yoga, so I'm yeah. like, I do do, I do sit in a no. yoga position in front of my altar, but my altar is low, so you know, oh, oh, okay. yeah, that's yeah. why I See, asked. I don't I have like, an altar I that. Be sitting in a chair. <laughs> yeah, well, no, and if that works for you, mm-hmm. do it and then come back and let us know. Okay, definitely. You know, but you're going to want to be burning incense, have a candle lit, have your stone on that altar, uh, ask God to bless your altar. And if you um, actually uh, have any questions on how to set up an altar, I know we've already done a show on oh, that. Oh, we have an altar class an big al- time. Yes. New so, moon. We also have a new moon episode where we show you how to set up your altar for new moon. Yeah, that's exciting. I love it. Besides how to communicate through your altars, because that's what altars are designed for, is to communicate with spirit. Mm-hmm. You know? So, no, you're right. So, if you have any questions, Travis Tibble podcast at gmail.com or you know make a comment on our channel yeah in the comment box below the comment box on and, youtube <laughs> and don't be an idiot about it if you got something rude to say you know what they say if you ain't got nothing good to say don't say anything at all no i'm just kidding yes um, be as inquisitive as yeah, you like but we're out we're offering as much as we can here for services and if you're a woman out here and you're looking to be more empowered by god ashley is the go-to yes um you know? just um hit me up at the pisces life coach on now, instagram yeah now what what month was that you did your goddess workshop uh last month actually uh ooh, like the beginning of february right yeah it, I mean, it was so amazing, and, and and to be honest, I feel like um it was such a a, a nice challenge for me because I had to really get in turn uh, in tune with my goddess energy and tap I used into to, it. Yeah, you had to tap into it, and you feel very bellicose from American Gods. If you guys haven't seen, that. yeah, American Gods, <laughs> Queen of baby. Sheba, Queen of Sheba. You've seen American Gods, haven't you? Seen it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She loves that show. I saw a little bit of it, and I do like it. I definitely like it. No, and and that's that's the way that's going to work. I mean. Um, you know, plant. You know, the nice thing we can see the planets in the sky. We know they're real. We know they're here. Mm-hmm. And if they were good enough for the aromas, they're good enough for me. And it's tangible, actually. It's something mm-hmm. you can actually see. And I know a lot of people feel a little awkward doing stuff with in the invisible. Yeah. Right? Yeah, but you know, you set up your Sunday altar, and maybe you're not going to ask for that. Maybe you just want the the vibrations of that angel to to elevate you. Maybe you're just looking to have some beauty in your life, some inner beauty and some inner... That would be a good time. And you can direct that to other people, correct? Like friends, you family. You bet you can. Same thing on Monday. You're looking for love? Go go to your altar on a Monday. Make a little altar. Do some planetary magic on Monday and get that flower, get that stone and pray to the angel uh, Gabriel mm-hmm. to help out your love life or to help you, you know, mm-hmm. 
uh, become a more emotionally uh, balanced for yourself. That's a huge one right now. Yeah. So, and Moonstone's good for that. And that'll be another episode. Cool. So, um, I want to thank Ashley. Thank you. Thank for, you. Always for being my co host here. I want to thank my executive producer, Athena. I want to thank the Lord God Yahweh and all of our angels and guides present helping us, uh, especially Angel Ariel, who we share. Yes. And I want to thank all of you on Spotify and iTunes uh, who are listening to us and who have subscribed to us. And I want to say subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. I want to bless everybody out here on YouTube. God bless you and Spotify, your families, your pets, your friends. And uh, we're wishing uh, much love and peace for planet Earth. So be it. So be it. Thank you so much. Time has come to be a race. Time has come for a change.